Hello, I'm Ben Scott and I'm lead architect of the, uh, the Natural History Museum's new open data portal. I'm sure everyone here knows and probably visited the, uh, the Natural History Museum. It's one of London's most iconic tourist attractions, built to be a cathedral to nature. However, what's often less well known about the museum is we're also a centre for research. We have over 350 scientists working in the museum, publishing over 700 scientific papers a year. Much of this research is based around our collection, in which we hold over 80 million specimens, and that spans 4.5 billion years from the birth of the solar system to the present day. And in de December 2014, we launched our open data portal to release all of our scientific data online as open data. Our primary data set is from the, uh, our collection, and we now have over 2.8 million specimen records on the, on the portal and our scientists can also upload any of their research data. And we have some really interesting data sets up there already. So this is a, uh, a uh, insect manipulator Lego instruction kit, which you can download from the portal and build your own uh, insect Lego manipulator. Um, we can also, uh, we've got a 3D render of a prehistoric ray, and um, even like all of our records from our sound archive, so you can play sort of the sound of species that we've collected over the years. And all of that's released under an open data license, so you can do whatever you like with it. So why has the museum taken the step of, open, of adopting an open by default policy? I mean, put simply, the largest driver is a public service mandate. We are the UK's repository for natural history specimens, and we have an obligation to make them available to as many people as possible. And we have a truly global collection, amassed from pretty much every, every country in the world. But within the museum, we can only display a tiny fraction of our collection, at just a few thousand items. And accessing our archives was only possible for those who could come and actually visit the museum. Getting them online means anyone anywhere in the world has access to our specimens and can now reuse them in their own research. The data portal also allows people to interact directly with the collection. You can suggest corrections to our data or contact the curator responsible for each specimen. And we're also experimenting with 3D imaging of specimens, so people will be able to, anywhere in the world, 3D print a copy of our specimens. And so what we're trying to do through the portal is open up our collection as much as possible and help support biodiversity research worldwide. Another very important reason why we're doing this is there's a vast amount of scientific value locked away in our collection. When a species, when a specimen was collected, the data and location was also recorded. Different species emerge at certain times of the, of the year, depending on how mild the weather is. So our collection represents a metric of climate change going back hundreds of years. On this slide, you can see the, um, the collection time of the orange tip butterfly since 1900, and how warmer and cooler springs correlate to its collection date. And we have scientists at the museum analysing patterns in these data to project climate change models. And we're, the, exactly the same data is now released openly for people to do the same studies. To get this data, though, we first need to transcribe and database our specimens. And this is one of the biggest challenges for the museum. To start releasing open data, we first need to transform a physical collection into a digital one. And we're aiming to get 20 million specimens digitised and released over the next five years. And this is a mammoth task. And as you can imagine, for a collection that's been built over hundreds of years by thousands of different people, the way each specimen was collected and catalogued is very different. For example, one of our most important historical collections is that donated by Sir Hans Sloan. A Victorian collector would collect anything and everything, but his mode of organising it was haphazard. It had started as a, hop, as a hobby, but grew into one of the biggest collections of its kind and is actually the basis of both the Natural History Museum and the British Museum's collections. And here you can see some of the boxes of seeds that he's in our collection. And this is actually one of the uh, more scientifically organised. Other parts of the collection are just grouped aesthetically. So we'll put all the red things in one cabinet, green in the other, because it's what looked nice. So, even where our museum curators have implemented a standard, these often don't make our digitisation work any easier. In entomology, it was common practice to affix the specimen label to the bottom of the insect's pin, which makes a lot of sense. The, the label will never go missing from the actual specimen itself. 
Unfortunately, it means that if we now want to digitise the records, we can't see the label. And so what we need to do is take every single specimen apart. And that takes time. The specimens are old and fragile, so we need to be careful. And we have a team of digitisers at the museum whose, whose job it is, day in, day out, to take the specimens apart, digitise them, and only then can the data be pushed onto the data portal as open data. And so the museum's open data portal represents a massive behind-the-scenes investment on the part of the museum and the staff at the museum. One of the key challenges we face now is how we can increase the digitisation throughput. At our current rate, we won't finish our 80 million specimens until the end of the century. And we, want, we need to get more and more specimens onto the portal. But the beauty of open data is that we can now involve people outside of the museum in this process. We know our collections data is messy. It's one of the results of having such a historic collection. But early on in the project, we decided if we waited to get our data into a perfect state, we'd never release anything. It's better to release messy data than nothing at all. And by putting that data out there, we now have people using it and suggesting improvements and correcting our own data. And that's the future for the portal and open data at the museum, building better interfaces to get more and more people interacting with the data. And we've already had some fantastic outputs from this. This is, uh, these colour swatches were created by a computer vision uh, designer, extracting colours from moth species on the, on the portal as open data. And they look lovely, but we're, we're also now experimenting with the same technique of, of extracting images for um, the colours from our specimens and using that in automatic species detection and improving our digitisation workflows. And it's where these two paths intersect, rapid digitisation and citizen science public involvement in our open data, that the portal is going to get really exciting. We know we have specimens in the collection that are new to science. We've got massive amounts of stuff in our basement that no one's ever looked at in years. And just at the weekend, on the, uh, to coincide with Halloween, our museum scientists published a new species of bats that had been pickled in a jar for 30 years, sitting down in one of the basements. And so this is a completely new species unknown to science, just, uh, just published. And finding a new species of mammal in the wild is an incredibly rare event. So imagine how many plants and insects we have in the museum still to be discovered. And soon, members of the public will have first sight of specimens and dig digitised and output onto the portal. And as soon as that happens, we will start having our first new species identified and named using open data. And that's going to be a fantastic legacy for the portal, citizen science and open data at an institution like the museum. And I think that's the real value of open data here. The data is not an end in itself. What's fantastic is what it empowers people and a new open generation are going to be doing with it. Thank you very much.